Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the third day of this year's JavaScript and PHP conference. My name is Sarah Sitcheraftis, Editorial Staff Assistant at SNS Media. And our second session of the day is titled Project Fugu, Progressive Web Apps Superpowered. And how Project Fugu can superpower your PVAs is something that our next speaker, Christian Liebel, who is a Microsoft MVP, Google GDE, and a member of the V3C Web Application Working Group, can tell you more about. If you have questions regarding the topic at hand, you can use the chat and question tool in Swapcard. Christian, feel free to take the screen and start the session. All right. So thank you very much for that very nice and kind introduction. Uh, I try to share my screen. Can you just tell me if it, if it works? Probably it should, I think. Yes. I can see your screen, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. Perfect. Well, then, um, hi, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the next session, which is about Project Fugu and Progressive Web Apps. Before we dive into that topic, um, yeah, I want to uh, also quickly introduce myself. So we skip over the parts that you have already heard. So uh, here, W3C, MVP, and GDE part. Uh, my name is Christian Liebel. I work for ThinkTacture as a consultant, and my personal focus topics are Angular and PWAs. And Project Fugu is a part of the PWA um, topic, so it's, it's one of my core uh, uh, topics where I yeah where I work in. Um, the slides that you can see here, you can either download them um, over the conference website, uh, but you can also download them from this link that you can see here, where I will. Uh, upload the slides somewhere after the session. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, then feel free to use the um, Twitter handle that you can see here, uh, Christian Liebel, one word, uh, all, well, yeah, one word essentially. Um, and if you have any questions, um, also feel free to use my email address here, which is christian.liebel at thinktecture.com. All right, uh, again, I can also see the chat. Thanks, Matthias, for confirming that my screen share works. That's great, good to know, thank you. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat and questions tool. I will try to keep an eye on them um, and then I can answer any questions that you may have. All right, now that being said, let's directly uh, yeah, jump into that topic. We want to yeah, essentially superpower PWAs. And so that means that PWAs are great already, uh, but maybe there's some stuff that is also missing. Now, let's start with the stuff that PWA is already great in. For example, PWAs can run offline. Uh, they have a certain cache where you can store HTTP requests and responses in. And that not only makes your PWA offline capable, uh, but also makes it run really fast because it can be opened directly from this local cache. Apart from that, um, PWAs can also receive push messages on the majority of platforms. Uh, that means on Chrome-based browsers, on Firefox-based browsers, um, and on Microsoft Edge, for example. It would not work um, in Safari. They currently do not support the push API required to receive push messages. And additionally, um, they can also, for, it, for instance, uh, access your microphone or webcam. Um, maybe you know different web-based conferencing tools. Uh, they use WebRTC and then access your webcam and microphone uh, to grab that audio and video stream from there. Now, this last uh, feature that we can see here basically is, is one um, uh, yeah it's only one example of what pwas can already do today uh, the web is as i've said very powerful you can for example um, draw very nice 2d or 3d um, visualizations hardware accelerated you can connect your gamepad to your machine and then uh, interact with web-based games for example or presentations uh, all of that is currently possible but still, there's stuff that is not possible today. And that, for example, is accessing the file system. So there are some features that you could use in the web, for example, the input type file, where you could load um, files from uh, the local file system. However, you could not save them back to their original position, uh, to their original position in the file system. So essentially, you would have to download that file again, which would also work. So you can download um, dynamic data from the browser, but only to your downloads folder. 
So that is too restricted because productivity applications such as Microsoft Word, for example, they are based on that workflow that you load a file, change it and save it back to the exact same position where it was. And that's right now not possible, but it may change uh, in the future. The next um, feature is, for example, raw clipboard access. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, uh, easy to compare with the file system uh, API. Again, if you are a productivity application and you would want to copy paste uh, data, for example, then um, you would like to access the clipboard in a, in a raw manner, just as native applications would do or could do. The thing is that in the web, um, we already had support for copy paste. However, that support was only restricted to text and it was restricted to text selections in the DOM. Now that is okay, I guess, but um, we would like to do more than that. For example, we might want to share images or we might want to share HTML fragments. So therefore we need a programmatic access to those features. Again, um, that was not, support, was not supported yet. It now started to change slightly, but we are still not at the raw clipboard access that uh, native applications have. And finally, again, let's imagine your Microsoft Word and you want to show the list of installed fonts on your system. Uh, currently, again, that's not possible due to privacy reasons. Um, that would be a really good fingerprinting um, yeah, indicator if I can get your uh, font table, because I would say that font tables are pretty, pretty unique. Um, or at least are so close at, uh, yeah, at restricting a certain, a certain group uh, that uses fonts. Now let's imagine you have a corporate font. Uh, so currently this was not available, but um, it could be made available with the new font table access API. Now, as you can see, there's stuff missing. And now we want to bring that stuff over to the web. And fortunately, there's a project that wants to do exactly that. Um, close the gap between web and native. This project is called, obviously, as you can see in the title, Project Fugu. Fugu is Japanese and it means blowfish. Uh, here you can see the official mascot, or no, it's rather the unofficial mascot of this project. Offic officially, it's called uh, the Capabilities Project, but in the discussions uh, that I uh, know, you rather refer to that unofficial name, Project Fugu. Fugu is a Japanese dish and it's very special because uh, the fugu is uh, poisonous. So if you prepare that meal correctly and you, you eat some, some fugu, uh, it is a very special experience because it creates a special experience on your tongue. However, if done wrong, you could probably die from it. And basically uh, that is also what this what this mascot should tell us, um, as we just seen with that font table access API, which could potentially, um, yeah, uh, mess around with privacy, with that finger, uh, with that file system API, that could potentially be a threat to to the user. If web applications now can access uh, the file system, you see that there are potential threats. Now. Um, uh, yeah, the Chrome team wants to make sure that um, you uh, have as uh, as less yeah, uh, interference as possible. Um, and then they want to make sure that uh, you can run your API, yeah, your APIs in a very safe um, and privacy preserving manner. That's why they chose that mascot, right? So special features, and we want to make sure that you do not die from them, so to speak. This project is led by three different companies. The first one is Google, the second one is Intel, and the third one is Microsoft. And now that, um, yeah, that combination of uh, companies may uh, sound a bit um, arbitrary, right? So what do they have in common? Well, uh, actually it's not that arbitrary. Uh, Google, Intel, and Microsoft all three share um, uh, no, are contributors to the Chromium source code base. I think it's obvious for Google. Um, Google is the maintainer of Google Chrome and maintains the Chromium uh, source code. Uh, Microsoft on the right-hand side is uh, the maintainer of the Microsoft Edge browser, which in their new version now also supports, sorry, is also based on uh, Google, uh, Google's Chromium uh, base. 
Now, Intel may seem a bit odd here in that uh, list of companies, but also there's a good reason for that. Intel is um, a processor manufacturer, and in their um, metadata, they have um, uh, figured out that uh, uh, users tend to spend more than 50% of uh, their processor time in browsers. So Intel as a processor manufacturer wants to make sure that you get the best experience in the program that you use most of the time. Now again, the goal uh, from uh, the FUBU team here, uh, a quote um, rep, uh, from a representative of that uh, team, Thomas Steiner, let's bring the web back API by API. All right, now there's a really long list of um, APIs is that Project Fugu wants to bring into the web. This here is just um, yeah, an excerpt of, of the long list of interfaces that the Fugu team wants to implement. If you want to see the entire list, then you can use the Google Fugu API tracker here on that link. Um, and what you can see here is uh, the list of um, APIs. So here on the top, for example, you can see the APIs that have already shipped. Again, it's just an excerpt. I removed a lot of APIs that have already shipped as a part of Project Fugu. Um, we will talk about the other stages, origin trial and dev trial in a moment. However, what you can see here is not only the list, such as um, with interfaces such as web NFC for reading and writing NFC tags, for web serial API to talk to serial interfaces, um, the window placement API to place your window wherever you want and the file handling API uh, that allows you to register for file extensions. And here you can see those two APIs that I talked about uh, at the beginning of the presentation. They are also here on that list. Here in that column who, you can see who of the Fugu team is implementing this. G is for Google, I is for Intel, and M would be for Microsoft. Um, also, you can see the Chromium bug where this feature is tracked in the Chromium issue tracker. Um, you can give certain stars for that. And so here we see a comparison of the stars that users left for that specific interface. And as you can see, the native file system API that has just recently shipped looks like it's very, uh, very popular here. And in the third col a column, you can see on which device categories this API will be implemented. Uh, not all uh, interfaces make sense on all devices. For example, file system API only really makes sense on desktop platforms because typically you do not have that file system um, concept on, on mobile devices. And now here on the right-hand side, you can basically see um, uh, the availability of that interface. Fugu means the API has shipped. Green means it's an origin trial. Again, we will talk about that. And the red, uh, sorry, the black flag uh, means that it would be behind a flag. Now I want to briefly discuss how uh, such a Fugu API um, is created. Um, all of the Fugu APIs that you can see here are already shipped in the Chromium-based browsers um, if the vendors choose to enable that feature. Um, and they are also on the standards track. However, they are parallelly on the standards track and parallelly implemented in the browser. So basically, effectively, at the beginning, Fugu APIs are um, proprietary APIs by the Chrome team. So let's have a look at the um, the process. So first of all, someone needs to write an explainer for that. And that someone could even be you. Um, so what an explainer document does is it just contains um, yeah, uh, an idea of what your interface should basically achieve. Uh, then you could pass over that explainer to the Fugu project. What they will do is discuss that capability. Well, first of all, they will check on their side if that capability actually makes sense. Uh, and if they agree, uh, they would discuss this capability with other developers, browser vendors, and stand uh, standard organizations. Next, you would iterate based on the feedback by uh, those involved. Next, you would compile a design document. Um, and that is now a, a little bit more elaborate uh, than the explainer. Explainer was simply about the idea. The design document should now also uh, contain the API shape, for example, or the architecture. Next, the uh, design document is sent over to the W3C tag for review. That's a technical architecture group of the web. And they uh, have to make sure that this new API basically fits into the web as a platform. Um, I've added links here if you want to see that in action um, and want to see how that exactly looks. 
um, but for this presentation, I would just skip over them. Um, next, when tech says, hey, that's that's great, that's cool, um, you would now create a formal technical specification. Typically, depends on what um, interface that is, but typically it could be in the web uh, inter -commu incubator community group uh, YCG, um, and there you would write that formal specification. Now, that's not a web standard. That's basically completely non-binding. It's um, just that you, again, further um, elaborate on your design document, but it has no standards status whatsoever. Next, uh, the uh, implementation in Chromium will follow, and then the dev trial starts. And that means that uh, your API would start behind a flag. Um, and uh, what you would do as a developer is to enable support for um, this specific API by turning the flag on that this that contains that API. In most cases, that will be the experimental web platform features flag, uh, but depending on the API, it could also be a different, a separate one. Next is origin trial. Um, during origin trial, you can already use a feature that is behind a flag, um, but uh, you have to register for a token, include that on your website, and then your users can already use that feature without having to enable that flag. That allows you to basically test out an API uh, in the wild and see if it is robust enough. And if it is robust enough, um, and uh, if it has support from more than uh, one browser vendor, and that means has more support than of the Chromium uh, vendors, that means Mozilla and Apple, it could be then transferred to the W3C working group, which can formally um, create now recommendations, and that is an actual web standard. All right, now PWA, Progressive Web Apps, they are a Project Fugu, um, sorry, yeah, they are Project Fugu topic. PWAs are um, uh, cross-platform. So what that means is you write them once and you can reuse them on different platforms. For example, on all of the relevant desktop platforms, Windows, uh, Linux, Mac OS, and also on the two major mobile platforms, iOS and uh, iPadOS, of course, as well, and Android. So Project Fugu APIs also uh, try to, to be uh, platform independent. Here in that example, we can see that the so-called uh, web share API. What this API does, it, it brings up the native share dialog. Um, and again, this should now be done in a cross-platform way. Um, and yeah, the solution, how they do that is the following. Basically, you as a developer get exactly one JavaScript API. Now, when you call that, for example, here we try to share a URL. You could also share text, or you could also share files in a new version of that API. Uh, then, um, yeah, basically it now depends on your browser what they do. And the good thing is that your browser knows for which platform it is compiled. So for example, um, Chrome knows if it's compiled for Windows or for macOS. And so during compile time, uh, the browser will get a link between this, this JavaScript API that you as a developer call and the actual native API that the uh, operating system offers. So for example, in, in the case of web share API, um, if you call that on Android, we would uh, call the share intent in behind. If you call it on Windows, we would call the data transfer manager API in behind and on macOS, the NS sharing service picker, plus on other platforms, whatever API comes close, so to say. So again, you don't have to worry about which system you run on, you just call one API and it will work at least if it is available, because this API, of course, is not available on older, on legacy browsers. Currently, it's available on Chrome, on Android, um, on Edge, on Windows and Android, and on Safari, macOS, and iOS. So that means there are still some browsers that do not support this API. And because of that, you as a developer need to check if an API is available on the target system. And you do that by essentially just using this um, uh, if statement, which also has a crazy name. It's called progressive enhancement, so to say, because it makes sure that your application does not break in browsers that do not have access to that API, because it's not 
uh, it's not possible, of course, to call a method that, is, that does not exist. So you as a developer have to make sure that the API actually exists. Uh, so you need to check if there is a share property on the, on the navigator object. And if there is, you can call it. And if it isn't, you need to do it with a different API. Um, the web has several legacy APIs that sometimes do something similar, or you would have to disable the functionality on that particular browser. So for example, you could substitute the web share API by the mail to uh, pseudo protocol, for example, which would then open the email program, which at least would come close to the web share API. Next, I want to show you a couple of Project Fugu APIs. And um, the, the beginning makes the so-called badging API. Yeah, badging API, that's um, a, a cool addition to uh, for progressive web apps. Now, let's imagine you have, what progressive web apps can do is that you can install an, an icon to your home screen or to your dock, to your taskbar. And now um, you have different ways to indicate that there are pending notifications, for example, in your application when you click on them. And so um, native applications have solved that by showing a badge on the um, application's icon. Here you can see it in that example from iOS. Now that's a native application, there's no PWA. A Facebook page, for example, says, hey, there are 16 unread notifications. Uh, open me in order to read those uh, 16 messages. Now, badging makes it great to communicate updates without distracting the user. Push notifications, in contrast, would distract the user because they show a notification banner on the screen. Typically, it's shown as a badge on the home screen, taskbar, or dock icon, and its appearance varies from platform to platform. Now, this API is super easy to call. Again, uh, it's, it's platform independent, so all you have to do is call the set app batch or the clear app batch method on the navigator object. And then basically you just say um, which, uh, which number you want to show on the, uh, on the batch. And I want to show you a quick demo of that. Uh, here I have uh, the Chrome browser um, and I will want to go to a demo that is called airhorner.com. Basically, this is a PWA that shows a, a horn. And if you click that, it would, um, yeah, it would make a sound. Uh, we can currently, because of my setup here, we cannot um, yeah, uh, transmit that over, over Zoom. But so if you click this here, it would make a sound. That's the essential part. Now, uh, you can install that application, of course. So let's do that. I click here on install, and I choose to install the app. And now, as progressive web apps do, uh, it has opened in a new separate um, window, which is on the same level as the others, right? And it has received a um, application, sorry, a, a, an entry in the dock. Also, if I choose to switch between apps, I can now see this Airhorner PWA in the app switcher. Now, the cool thing is that when I this demo implements that API, and when you now click that horn, for example, it sends it sends a, sends a sound and also will increment the batch count here uh, on the application's icon. So if you click it multiple times, the batch will increment. All right. Now, that's not a very practical use case, of course, for um, uh, for the batching API, but for example, the Twitter PWA uses it, which is this here. Uh, I use that on a day-to-day -day basis, and they implement that just fine, and it really makes makes fun. Oh, cool. Uh, okay, cool. That's for the batching API. Now for the second API, there are so-called shortcuts. Now I'm pretty sure that you all know what shortcuts are. Here's a screenshot of them on the right-hand side. Shortcuts are secondary entry, entry points for your application. And uh, what you can do is if you long press an icon, you can add different yeah, secondary entry points. Here on the right-hand side, we have um, a sample from the Twitter PWA, and they offer you to um, compose a new tweet um, directly from the home screen or explore tweets, see your notifications by just long pressing um, the application icon. And Windows has a similar, um, a similar concept. Uh, there it's called jump list. And if you right click your taskbar um, entry, you can see different tasks that the application offers. For example, uh, Outlook allows you to open, um, uh, to, to write a new email, for example, or uh, compose a new calendar invite. iOS also has the same context. When you long press, 
uh, or force touch on older devices, the home screen icon. Now, the cool thing is that PWAs can also make use of that. And actually, in fact, the PWA on the right hand side is a, uh, sorry, this application is a PWA, it's a Twitter PWA, and they added support for those home screen quick actions. Now, implementing support for them is, again, uh, pretty straightforward. All you have to do is extend your web, web app manifest. That's the technical specification that allows you to um, define the installed uh, behavior and appearance of your PWA. And there you can simply add uh, the shortcuts property, which is an array, and you can add different shortcuts to it with a name, short name, also possible with the URL that should be opened and with different icons that you want to show. That's the next API. Again, I would say pretty nice fine polishing for PWAs. The next one is the screen wake lock API. That's also pretty, a pretty cool API. Um, and here's what it's about. For very good reasons, your application, uh, also your entire device, it goes to sleep if you do not use it for a longer time. That is uh, to reduce energy consumption, and it's absolutely, absolutely makes sense that your device do, does that. However, in some situations, um, that could also work against you. For example, if you watch a movie, it is intended that your screen will stay on. If you are cooking something and want to see a recipe on your screen, it would also be bothersome if your screen just turns off, if you have dough on your hands. For example, if you would want to uh, unlock your tablet again, and Touch ID won't work. So basically, you don't want your screen to turn off while you're cooking something and reading a, re a recipe. Now, the Screen Wake Lock API uh, can prevent your device from turning off um, while the application has a wake lock. Again, here's an example uh, for this API. Um, for example, we can again see the progressive enhancement here. So we check uh, if we have the interface and if we have it, we are using it. And if not, there's nothing much that we can do about it. Then, well, the screen has to turn off. Now, uh, here you can see um, how the interface is called. It's on navigator wake lock. And then you have the request. A method and you could um, specify different locks that you would like to get. Currently, uh, we only have the screen lock, but the API is prepared to provide other locks in the future, probably as well. And as long as you have it, the screen will not turn off. The wake lock is automatically released um, when you switch the tab, for example, or if you uh, give that lock back. Okay, so that's really cool. Screen wake lock API, again, really simple to do and a good thing for uh, kiosk style apps for, um, yeah, for recipe websites and probably others as well. Next API that I want to show is a so-called shape detection API. This API allows you to detect shapes and images in a hardware accelerated manner. And that means that you can detect faces or barcodes or text in images with the help of the native interfaces. Typically, operating systems already prov provide such interfaces that allow you to do exactly that, what you can see here. Uh, now, again, Fugu APIs will simply connect a web API over to those existing native APIs. And usage, again, is really, really simple. All you have to do is, again, check if there's uh, a property on the global window object. This time, it's called face detector. And um, the face detector then takes an image. Uh, what we can do here in that example is just use an image that's on the website. So here, I just grab an image from, uh, from our website. And then I create a new instance of the face detector. And then in the detect method, um, yeah we will send that over to the operating system API and let uh, this API detect the faces on this image. And then as a result, we will get uh, the list of faces that we have found, um, including their bounding box. Some APIs also return the um, landmarks, for example, so the position of your nose or of your eyes, for example. That's all possible uh, with the help of shape detection API, in that case, especially the face detection API. I also have an example for you. If you would like to try that out on your machine, I'm not sure if it needs uh, Chrome Canary, 
probably it also works on the rolled out version of Chrome yet. I'm not quite sure about that. So if you would want to try it out, you could open dbuild.io slash face debt for face detect um, on your uh, on your machine. I will give you another five seconds if you want to try that out. However, please do not forget to come back to our swap card tab. <laughs> All right, now um, I will show it here as well. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot show you the live demo because um, I can only give one application access to my webcam, and that is Zoom. And uh, so basically the software that we are using to streaming to you. And so that's why I make, made a, a recording beforehand and here you can see it. So here I'm moving, uh, the webcam basically captures, uh, captures me. And as you can see, we are using uh, the shape detection API to, um, yeah, to then detect faces on on the screen and on this image. And you can see it's actually pretty accurate. Um, there's sometimes there's um, uh, a little uh, false positive, so to say. Uh, so you see that little red background, uh, red rectangle sometimes flash in the background. But apart from that, it's pretty pretty accurate. And that's for the shape detection API. Also interesting developments on the web is that there is a new, um, yeah, a new group called machine learning for the web, also WebML, uh, also called WebML. And their goal is to implement low level web APIs for machine learning, the so-called web neural network API. Microsoft, Google, Apple, and Mozilla are on board. And probably we will even have more low level methods in order to do some stuff like face detection with the help of neural networks in the future. All right, so the next interface that I want to talk about is the async clipboard API. Um, yeah, I guess as you can read from the, from the name what it tries to do. It gives you an asynchronous um, access to the clipboard. Uh, asynchronous is important because if you want to process data, for example, if you want to shrink down an image that uh, was pasted over to your application, it would, be, um, it would have detrimental side effects uh, for your user if that API would be synchronous because your API, sorry, your uh, UI would freeze uh, when you paste something. So it's uh, for a good reason that this API is now asynchronous. On the top, you can see how you would, how you could copy uh, content from your website. There's a convenience method called write text. You can use that for um, plain text. Um, and there's uh, the method write, which allows you to uh, currently in Safari that's implemented for PNG images, plain text, and HTML fragments. And on the bottom, you can see how you would paste content by using uh, the read text and read methods. We will see that API in action later on. So I will uh, quickly skip, skip over the rest here and talk about the file system access API. Um, now, as I said in the beginning, websites only have a limited access to the file system, but we have a whole cate category of applications, productivity apps, uh, that heavily rely on working with files. For example, Visual Studio Code. For example, Adobe Photoshop. For example, um, Microsoft Office apps, Excel, Word, PowerPoint. Now, the question is, wouldn't it be great if your web application could also open files, folders, overwrite files, save them back to the file system? And the answer is, it's possible now, at least in Chrome 86. This is uh, the first browser. It's the current stable version of Chrome that supports your web application uh, to access the native file system. Here's how that looks. First of all, you need to Again, check if the interface is available. If it's available, you use it. Here for opening files, it's pretty straightforward again. You just call the show open file picker method. When you do that, you will receive a file handle. You could also receive multiple file handles, but the default is you only request one. And if you got one, um, we can open the file. Then we get access to the binary contents of that file. And then we could do something with it. For example, load it. If it's an image, we could load it in our web app. If it's text, we could maybe pre-process it in some manner and, and show it then on the screen. If it's a PDF, we would want to render it, for example. If we don't have access to the show open file picker API, then we need to use a fallback API or disable the file open feature uh, in our application. 
Now, the show open file picker method also supports a configuration object. Uh, for example, there you can specify which types that you support, that your application supports with the types um, property that you can see here. And here we can see that it, our application wants to open PNG files. So it should be the image PNG um, MIME type and it should have the PNG um, extension. Also, you could choose to um, consume multiple uh, file handles, for example. So the user can select more than one file. Also for that, I have a little demo for you, which you can again try out on your machine if you like. Uh, the uh, address is paint.js.org. Uh, and you can use this demo on your uh, mobile um, device, but also on your desktop device. I will show it here on the desktop. And this, um, this application now makes use of accessing the clipboard and uh, accessing the file system. Now again, paint.js.org is uh, the name of this demo. And I will now switch over to it. All right, so again, cool thing for PWAs is that you can simply add them or simply open them by entering the, um, the correct address in the address bar. So here I'm entering paint.js.org. Now I open it. And now you can see that um, here is a paint, uh, sorry, a, a web-based clone of Microsoft Paint right in the browser. It's a version for Windows 95. And I implemented some, some tools, for example. So here you can see I can, can draw stuff. I can use the fill tool to add some color to those shapes. And this works great in the browser. And it worked the exact same way. So what you see here with that base um, functionality, in the evergreen browsers. And it would also work on Internet Explorer. Um, and this works in uh, Safari, Firefox, uh, Chrome, and Edge, obviously, as well, because it's just, um, it's just Canvas API. OK, and uh, pointer events, but they would also be available in Internet Explorer. All right, now, again, as this is a PWA, we can now install it. That would work um, on all desktop systems using Chrome. Um, currently, the other desktop uh, and Edge as well, but Firefox and Safari do not yet in support installing apps uh, on desktop browsers. Um, on mobile browsers, it would work with um, uh, Chrome, Edge, and Firefox on Android. Uh, and it works in Safari on iOS and iPadOS. So on those systems, Apple also supports installing the applications to the home screen. Now I click that um, install button here again. And now as we have seen before, the application now opens in an own window and it has a known icon and so on and so forth. Now what we can do here in this, um, in this demo is for example, save. Um, save this file, this great drawing that I did here by just using this uh, file and then save command. Now the native, um, this is the file system access API, the native file picker comes up and I can now save that file to my desktop. So I call it untitled, here we can see the PNG type, that's fine for me, I hit save. And now as you can see here on the desktop, this new um, file uh, has appeared and basically it contains uh, my nice drawing here from the browser. And also you could open it uh, by using file open again. Uh, the next thing that I want to show you is uh, clipboard integration. So you can also now pick a selection here. For example, I take that yellow square and then I can choose edit copy. And then here in preview, I can select edit paste. And now I've received that selection that I made uh, from the paint app. And now let's do it the other way around. I can select here uh, that whatever that is, I'm, I'm not sure, and select a copy command, head over to paint and say paste. And now here, my uh, great selection will show in, in the web-based version again. And dots, uh, that's also not everything. Uh, in the current version of Chrome Canary, which I have here, uh, you can also register for file extensions. What I did here is during install, I let this application register for, uh, the P for PNG files. So if I right click on that untitled image here, select open with, I can now see the paint application here. 
So now let's just close that app here and, and choose to open the file in Paint. We can now see our PWA has again opened uh, and it opened the file that I selected in the native um, Finder app or in the Explorer app on Windows. All right, now that's all that I wanted to show you. Um, I will now uh, quickly summarize it, I would say, and then we can uh, talk about your questions. I at least see one here in the chat. Let me see. Oh, no, there are more. There are two. Yes, okay, perfect. So we are talking about them in a minute. Um, before that, I would just want to quickly summarize what we have seen. Um, the question is, where's the web heading to? Where are mobile, uh, sorry, where are uh, business applications heading to? And in my uh, opinion, I think uh, it's all heading to PWA. Um, so seeing this uh, file system access API, seeing async clipboard API, seeing web share API, seeing file handling API, basically always makes me think about productivity apps like VS Code, for example. VS Code already is web-based, so basically it would now be so simple for them to basically just create a PWA uh, from that application. Sure, you don't have all interfaces um, in the web, so for example, you could not uh, show the terminal in there, but um, the rest of, uh, rest of the things uh, might even work. Of course, there's also stuff with plugins, it might not, but yeah, uh, so for, uh, for the basic functionality, you could already make uh, the shift to the web here. Also, um, you wouldn't need that many native uh, implementations anymore. Let's imagine Microsoft PowerPoint. Everything that this application does can already be done in the browser. And the only thing that was left until now is file system access. And now we have it, at least in the current version of Google Chrome. So again, to summarize it, um, Project Fugu uh, helps the web to become more and more capable, becomes, helps web applications to become more and more native. I expect that we will see many more app experience in the future now, uh, for example, IDEs, productivity apps, and so on. However, always bear in mind that there are um, alternative approaches that threaten the web as a platform, um, for example, Xamarin or Flutter. Uh, and that support for modern, for modern web APIs vary uh, from uh, platform to platform. I think one of the questions is already heading in that direction. For example, um, typically uh, Firefox or, um, uh, or Safari don't support all of those cool new APIs that we can see here. However, you as a developer can make a difference. You can file bugs in browser engine bug trackers. You can tell uh, Mozilla and, um, uh, and Apple that they should add um, support for different APIs that even happened in the in the few, uh, in the in the past. So developers just told Apple, please do that, and then uh, at some point they they did it. Uh, and also, you can file a new API if you like by uh, calling um, uh, Google new Fugu request if you want to add uh, an API on your own. All right, now to your questions. Let me just quickly see if it's still two. Yes, looks like so. Uh, so uh, Sebastian, is it possible to access whole directories and working on it like creating new files with the file system access API? The answer is yes, you can access a whole directory and work in it. Um, the second question from Dominikos is, one important company missing is Apple. Did they announce whether they pick up the APIs for Safari Mobile? Um, good question. Uh, actually, they they won't tell you before they implement it. That's uh, unfortunately the situation in the web. So basically, Apple will never uh, say before implementation if they intend to implement something or not. Uh, so basically, some it will simply appear sometime and then it's there. Um, the good message is that this has already happened for Fugu APIs. So for example, Web Share API is a Fugu API and they added support for it um, uh, in Safari, not only on mobile devices, but also on the desktop. So Safari was, was in fact the first browser um, to implement Web Share API, a Fugu API uh, on a desktop operating system, which I think is quite interesting. Also, they implemented the async clipboard API, which also is a Fugu API. All right, I think 
those are all of your questions and I don't see a new one. So I would say I'd like to, to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you for joining. And again, if you have any questions after my talk, then feel free to drop me a line on Twitter or via email. Thank you very much. And thank you, Christian, for that very informative talk. <laughs> it was a pure joy to listen to. And yes. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yes, and to all our conference attendees, um, I hope you enjoyed the session and have a small break and enjoy also the other sessions that are still coming today. So far, I wish you all goodbye. Goodbye then. <laughs>